happening guys? Welcome back to the workshop. Now, it's been a long two days. I am sweating, it's almost time for a beer, but the resin is done and we've achieved an absolutely beautiful effect with the copper metallic powder and a solid copper polished pigment. It's a two pigment effect and it looks fantastic. And we also have a translucent middle in this table with the copper on the bottom of the clear resin and you can see down into the table. So it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna show you in this video how to achieve this. In the last video, we took an oak slab, we built a router sled and we flattened the live edge slab and we prepared it for the pour. In this video, we're gonna build the mold and I'm gonna take you through the entire pour process to achieve this effect. It's a four stage pour, so it's a lot in it. So grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, a beer, whatever you need to relax, sit down and we'll take you through this. So without further ado, let's jump into this copper resin pour. So this is the part we're gonna be using. It is all by glass cast. Now I've been sent this by MID Glass Fiber Supplies. Those guys have really helped me out. They've gone above and beyond to support me in this project, which is absolutely fantastic. So everything I see, you see here will be available for those guys. Their website is glassfiber.ie. E. So if you're in Ireland, you want to do a river table or you want resins for wood turning or all your resin needs for boat building, those guys can sort you out and are very, very nice to deal with as well. And it's with help from companies like this that enables me to do these YouTube videos because there's quite a big expense involved in making content and uh, the support from companies like this is absolutely fantastic. And that's what's allowing me to do this resin table build. So like I say, we're going to be using the glass cast product and this is the glass cast 50. This is the deep pour stuff. So you have to make sure that your resin Resin is a deep pour resin when you're doing these river tables because resin heats up as it cures and if you use the wrong type of resin it can overheat, it can begin to bubble up and smoke and you do not want that. The glass cast resin comes in glass cast tree which is the surface resin so that you can see that you can surface your tables with it, you can use it for your penny floors. Then they have the glass cast 10 which you can pour up to 10 mil so that's great for your wood turning, for your pen blanks for making your jewelry, all that stuff. And like I say, the glass cast 50, this is the deep pour resin. So you'll need this for your river tables. This pours up to 25 millimeters. And so that's what we're gonna be using today in conjunction with the solar colors and the pigments. So we'll take a look at those now. So to color our resin then, this is the effect that we're going for. Now I showed you this in the last video. So if you check that out, it's a copper color that I'm trying to achieve. So this has two different pigments in it. So it has a metallic copper powder and it has a solid polished copper pigment in it, which I'll show you now. So hopefully we'll be able to achieve this with our oak table, that's what we're after. So here is the powder. This is what we're gonna be putting into it. So let's get the camera to focus on that. Again, it's all glass cast products and I got it all from the guys at MID Glass Fiber Solutions. So check them out at glassfiber.ie. So this is the powder and this is the solid polished copper. So if you guys are trying to, uh, replicate what I'm doing here. This is the products that I'm using. Again, it's all from glass cast. So this is the polished copper pigment. It's really, really shiny copper. So it's the mixture of two of those and hopefully we will achieve the look that we're going for. Now we're gonna build a mold from these sheets of polypropylene. Always find that hard to say, polypropylene sheets. It is super smooth and shiny on one side. That's gonna be the bottom of our mold. So it gives you a really flat and smooth finish to your resin on the underneath of your table. So hopefully you don't have too much work to do after you pull the table from the mold and the resin will not stick to this. So it's easy to break your table out from your mold and it's reusable because you can just clean the resin straight off and it peels straight off when we're done. So that's the first thing we wanna do. Let's get building this mold. Okay guys, just before we jump into building the mold, just give you a quick update on where we're at. So in the last video, you saw me flatten this live edge slab. We built a router sled and we flattened this slab. Now I've added two more pieces because I thought it might've been a bit much resin out on either side. So we have a corner piece here and a corner piece here. And we're gonna have like two river sections and then we're gonna try and fill all this uh, holes and rotted area with our resin. I've also just taken the grinder with a flapper disc to the side of this, clearing, cleared off any loose material, hoovered this out. I got a compressed air, blew everything off it to make sure that there's no loose particles. That's all taken off. And we have a good side for the uh, resin to adhere to. So. This is the table I'm gonna be building it on. I've leveled this table so it's leveled in both directions. Keeping your mold as level as you possibly can in all directions will ensure that your resin sits nice and level. It will self level, so that's the important thing. So make sure that your surface is nice and level. It would mean you have less flattening work to do when you pull this from your mold. So let's get on and build our mold. 
Right, so the first thing we want to do here is rip down one of our sheets of polypropylene and we're going to make our side walls out of this. Now my total depth of my pour is 42 millimeters. That's the thickness of my oak slab. So I'm going to cut the sides to 60 millimeters so that they'll be higher than my pour and they'll contain my pour. So nice and easy. I'm just going to use my track saw and I'm going to cut four strips of 60 millimeters to make my four walls. So I've just set my track saw up. So we're looking good. 60 and 60 there. So let's get on it. Okay, now that we have our four side walls cut, we just need to cut them to their correct lengths. So we'll do that now. I'm just going to use them on the miter saw and we'll chop them to the size they're going to need to be. You will obviously make these to the size of your table and your pour. So let's get on it. So we have our side walls cut to size now. We have a sheet of polypropylene underneath our timber. So I'm just going to use the timber or our slab here just to glue this up so I can just hold it against it. Now this doesn't have to be perfectly square yet. The slab was only roughly cut to its final dimensions. Once the resin is all poured and it's cured and we take the entire slab out, then we will square it up using the track saw. So get it relatively close to where you need it to be and uh, you can set this in. Now we're going to be using hot glue to glue the edges of all this and set up our mold and then we're going to be using a timber frame on the outside to support it. This is only like five mil um, polypropylene, so it's quite flexible. It has a dull side and a shiny side, so we're we'll going to keep the shiny side facing in. That gives the best finish on the inside. Again, we'll be running the track saw around the edges anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, so hot glue the edges, get this set in place, then we're going to build a timber frame around it. Now, one thing to have on hand, it's a tip I've been given, is painter's caulk. Silicone will not seal the leak if you start getting a leak from your mold and your resin starts pouring out on the floor you won't seal it with the hot glue again and you won't seal it with silicone it just won't stick to it but painter's caulk apparently does do the job for resealing it so we'll get this all made up and we're going to do a small pour let that sit and we can monitor what's happening rather than pouring in all our resin and having it end up on the floor that would be a disaster right so enough talking let's get this glued in place so I'll just have the hot glue going here. Plenty of glue sticks on hand. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fairly straightforward. Just get this set up and get it glued in. So there we go guys, that is our mold built. So we have it all hot glued, taking care to make sure that it's completely sealed up. Use plenty of glue, so have plenty of glue sticks on hand. Don't run out. If I'm, if I'm gonna make more of these, I'm definitely gonna invest in a slightly better hot glue gun. This one is not bad, but the power lead on it is very, very short, so it's a bit awkward to use, and uh, you don't get a whole lot of hot glue out of it. There are some larger ones for doing bigger jobs like this. So definitely, maybe if you're gonna do a lot of resin tables and build a lot of molds, a better glue gun would be a good investment. But there's nothing much more to it than that. And that's a good solid fix. That's really sealed all the way around. That stuff goes off, it goes like good and solid and you can scrape it off and reuse your mold again when you're finished. Now I'm gonna build a timber frame around this just to support these side walls because they're a little bit on the tin side. And then we should nearly re be ready to go. Okay guys, there we go. Our mold is ready to go. It's all glued in place. I've just put a two by one lat all the way around it, just as a little bit of support. It's not gonna take a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of resin here, so it's not gonna be too much pressure. Just to support the mold a small bit. I've also created some blocks from um, a bit of four by two. So they will sit down. I'll put a bar across them and clamp it down. That keeps everything 
um, compressed into the mold to stop the timber from floating on the resin. So these small pieces, these will float up on the resin. So we want to keep them pressed down. And this is mold release tape. So the resin will not stick to this. So anything you're covered in this mold release tape, you can pull free the resin. So that's why I have my blocks all wrapped up in that tape. So I'll just put a, um, a piece of timber across here and clamp that to my bench. It'll keep everything pressed down and I'll sit a weight in the middle of this. Like I say, it's not too much resin, so we're not expecting this to flow too much, but uh, all precautions we will take. So there we go. So now we are just getting ready now to mix the resin and to start our initial pour. So I'll take these uh, timber pieces out. I will give this a vacuum out, make sure everything is spotless, make sure nothing gets contaminated with dust or anything like that. And we will do our initial resin pour. Let's get on it. Right, we're on to mixing the resin and the first mix I'm going to do is about a two kilo mix. So keep it nice and small. I'm just going to pour in a base layer, let that settle and make sure the mold is not leaking anywhere. So again, we're going to be using the glass cast 50. Now there's two ways of mixing. You can do it by volume. It's 100 to 50 or two to one, or you can do it by weight, which is 100 to 45. And you have all the information is available on the website. If you go to glassfiber.ie or they will send you out these full sheets on all the products. So everything is written down here. So in order for me to make two kilos of this, I need to pour in 1.38 kilos of resin and 0.62 kilos of hardener. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna mix in some of our powder and some of our color and we'll count how many drops we put in and we'll uh, try and estimate how much powder we're putting in and we'll try and make and keep it consistent. So again, I'm on my own doing this, so I'm gonna have to leave you guys set up there while I do this and you guys just watch. And uh, yeah, let's rock on. So, on the scales, it's zeroed. Now, it's good and warm in here today. It's probably about 21, 22 degrees Celsius in this shed today, so it's quite warm. Um, if you're doing this in the winter time, just be careful that your resin is not gone cloudy or crystallized. If it's very cold in the shop, that can happen. Just put your resin down into a bucket of warm water. Let it warm up and let, let's get all that cloudiness and crystalliness out of it. So uh, yeah, let's get on with this. I'm going to pour this in and I need 1.38 kilos. So let's go. There we go. Bang on. So that's that. And to that then I need to add in 0 0.62 kilos of hardener. So if I zero that again. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. So that's the exact mix we're gonna need. Now, let's get our pigment in. I'll get you guys a little bit closer for this. Okay, so our pigment, we're gonna start off, um, I'm just gonna start mixing this in. I'm gonna do, just count the drops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll just start mixing that up now. Here we go a little bit more. So let's see. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Again, this is not an exact science, but we'll try and keep our pores consistent. So I'm gonna spend about 10 minutes or more mixing this, making sure that it's thoroughly mixed together, scraping the sides, scraping the bottom. I'm gonna pour it into a, another container and, and mix it on again, just to make sure that the hardener is completely mixed. If you don't do that, you can end up with some white, kind of smoky areas where the hardener wasn't mixed properly with the resin. So we wanna make sure that we get this right. Okay, let's get our copper powder in there. Now for this one, I'm going to use a teaspoon and we're going to try and estimate what we're putting in. So we don't want to put in too much. This is kind of going to play it by eye. So there we go. Okay, guys, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So there's about 28 drops of the solid polished copper. Now I know it's not an exact measurement, 
but it's just dropping it in out of the dropper and then I put a little bit more of the metallic copper pigment in it. So you can see when I mix it around, I'm getting that nice swirly effect. So that's what I want to achieve. So we're just gonna keep stirring this now and this will naturally let the air out. I'm gonna put a lot of air bubbles and air into it by stirring it, but the clear or the glass cast epoxy will release the air itself. So you'll see all the bubbles will rise to the surface. So I'm gonna keep mixing this for another five minutes and I'm gonna pour it into another container and make sure that this thing is completely mixed. Then I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll pour. By letting it sit, I let all the air bubbles come to the top and then we can start our pour. So let me get on with mixing. And when we're all mixed up and ready to pour, I get back to you guys. All right, let's get on to the pour. And again, I just have to set you up because I'm on my own here and I have to concentrate on the pour. So I've you set up there. I'm just gonna pour this in. You guys can kind of get the idea. You don't need to see me, you need to see the pour. So um, we're just gonna pour in a small amount of this in both sides and then some in the middle. And we'll just check and make sure that our mold is not leaking anywhere. So that's the most important thing. So we don't wanna waste all the resin. So we're just gonna pour this in. Just get that flowing around and let it level itself out. Small bit on that side, small bit more here. Come down and there, now that will begin to soak into the timber. Get some more down this side. So far, so good. I've kept the timber frame up so that I can see my joint all the way around. Okay guys, I have a little leak area right here and a small little one on the other side. So that's why we don't wanna pour in all our resin because uh, yeah, you can end up losing it all. But don't panic, a bit of painter's caulk should clear it up and once this starts to set, it'll plug all the gaps anyway. So I'm not gonna pour in any more resin out than what's in there. I'll let that set up, let it begin to get tacky and that will plug the holes naturally and then we can pour the resin on top of that. But I'm just going to uh, get some painter's caulk in there. Apparently, from what I've been told, this can seal it up. Silicone won't seal it, but painter's caulk will. So we'll just get some in there and seal that up. As I say, don't panic. And if we're going to panic, let it be organized panic. There we go. Now I'll do the same on the other side just to plug that little gap and we let this set up. So the next thing I want to do then guys is just take some of this resin and I want to paint it onto all my live edges and all my area of wood that's brittle or weak any of the kind of spongy areas, just to firm it all up. And by painting on your live edges, it will stop air bubbles forming on those edges. So we're just gonna use the resin. It's just a case of dip it in and just paint it on. That'll soak into that live edge and it will help, like I say, prevent air bubbles forming when we pour over the top of it. Okay, that is essentially stage one complete. The painter's caulk sealed up our leak nicely there, so that's nothing to worry about. So I'm gonna let this set up, like I say, get, start to go off, start to get tacky. And as soon as it starts to get sticky to touch, then we pour in our next layer. So there's a couple of mil in there now. The next layer we're gonna get some more, so it'll be a deeper pour and uh, we should be good to go. So it's probably gonna be a three stage pour this is gonna to take to do this. You could do it in two stages. I'm just being a little bit over cautious when it comes to uh, this mold leaking. So this is actually my first pour, so I'm not an expert on this. So I'm taking it nice and slow, being nice and cautious with it, getting to grips with this resin to see how it performs, how it reacts and what we can do with it. This is an experiment um, as much as anything for me. So uh, yeah, that's stage one done. 
I'm gonna come back to this now in a few hours time. We'll check on it and then once it starts to get tacky, we'll mix up some more and get that in. All right guys, so I've just added the second lot. So I made up another um, two kilos of resin and poured that in. So there's a total of four kilos gone into it now. I reckon it's gonna take about eight. So we're halfway there. So tomorrow when this is all fully set up and when it's just tacky to touch, it'll be almost hard, just tacky to touch, I'm gonna to pour in the rest. Cause you can do 25 mil at a time. This is roughly 42 millimeters. So I'm splitting it in half, so roughly 21 millimeter pours and uh, that should be good and safe. You could probably go a little bit more, but just with the heat factor, you just wanna be careful. So I've mixed it up just same way as I did. Again, mix, 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 um, put it into another bucket, mix it again for another 10 minutes. I've added slightly more pigment this time. I'll give you a close up of that now in a second. And I've also just went around the whole side of the mold with some painter's caulk just to seal it all up, just to be extra careful because tonight, obviously when I'm asleep, I don't want this thing leaking out on the floor. But the bottom layer set up so it was nice and tacky, that should have sealed the mold completely. So we should have no issues there. So yeah, let's have a quick look. So there you go guys, there's a quick close up. So you can see how much darker it is now. Our first um, layer that we poured in was very, very thin. So you could see the white polypropylene coming through it. That's why it looked kind of pinkish and not really copperish. Now you can see how dark this is gonna get as we layer it up. It'll be completely uh, opaque. You won't be able to see through it. Now, one thing you have to remember is trying to achieve this effect, you have to agitate the resin a little bit. The pigment will settle and you will lose the effect. Um, one thing you have to be careful of is as you're agitating that um, resin, you will add air bubbles to it. So it's something you just have to be aware of. In order to keep the pattern, you have to kind of move it around when it's getting close to setting up. So uh, you can put air bubbles into it at that stage and they're hard to get out. But you can see just by moving that around, you can see the patterns you can put into it. Again, this has only just gone in now, so it's still very, very wet. Um, so we want to achieve that copper kind of coming through, something like that. You can see that lovely swirl pattern now, that's beautiful. But that won't stay like that. Like I said, the pigments will settle and everything will spread back out and even out again. So we'll have to come back to this as it's setting up and put that back into it. And just very, very lightly. You don't want to be splashing or sloshing it around because you don't want to add any air bubbles. Now, I'll have to come back out here maybe late tonight and do this. So I probably won't catch it on camera. But that's the idea anyway. You can see exactly what I'm trying to achieve there. You can see on this side how it's all kind of flattening back out. So you have to kind of mix it again. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm gonna to have to do later on when this starts to get thicker. I'm gonna to have to mix this pattern back into it. Make sure I don't put any air bubbles into it. And uh, that's how we're gonna achieve our effect. Now, obviously it's not as critical at this time because this is not the top layer but I want some consistency going through the layers as you're looking on the side. But we'll have to do this again with the top. So yeah, there we go. That's our second one in now. Tomorrow, it's gonna to be uh, pour the rest in. Inside in the middle of the table, then I'm gonna pour in some of the polished copper. And then I'm gonna put clear resin in to fill this up because I wanna be able to look down inside this table. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So we'll make that decision when the time comes tomorrow. So let's rock on. Okay, it is the following morning. It's about six o'clock in the morning. I'm still not fully awake yet, but we're out bright and early in order to do this second pour, or this third pour now is what we're on. So we wanna get the pours all finished today. So by the end of the day, wrapped up and have this thing setting for a couple of days. So it's all good and tacky now. I was able to take off the clamps because the resin is now holding everything in place. So we can see our entire table now, which is good. So I've mixed up the next batch. We're gonna get that in now. And this is our final pour. So this is the one where we wanna make sure that we have our effect right. So we have to spend the whole day now checking on this and making sure we get that effect nice and right. It's good and tacky now. Like I said, it's set up overnight. You really wanna time this so that you can get your final pour if you're trying to achieve this effect, you wanna get your final pour where you have a whole day to kind of achieve your effect. Because once it sets up and gets tacky like it is now, that's it, the opportunity is gone to put those kind of swirl patterns in it. Okay, so next batch is mixed up, let's get that in. I'm just using slightly uh, smaller mixing cups if you're wondering, just because I'm out of the larger ones now, the resin in those larger ones hasn't set properly, so you can't break it out yet. So I don't want any dry pieces in my finished pour, so I have to use completely new cups, but I'm only the smaller ones left. So it's no big deal, we just have to do it in two lots. So I'm just gonna flash off the bubbles again and we're gonna get this in.
So I've added a little bit more metallic powder to um, this mix. Just to help it achieve a little better effect. That's the next one in. So I'm going to mix up another full batch again. It's going to take another full one. There you can see I've added a lot more of the metallic powder. So that's just after the initial pour. So we're getting a better effect on it now. Let's get the rest in. Right, let's get our final piece in. So I've just added some pa painter's caulk around all the borders just to create a little dam because I want to flow this up slightly over the lip of the timber. So I don't want it flowing across the whole lot of my timber because it's harder than the timber and it's kind of hard to remove. So you don't want to leave yourself a whole lot of sanding. I will be leveling this again with the router slate and then sanding and finish, but we'll do that in another video. So yeah, that's just to create a little dam around um, the edges of my timber, that's all. So let's get this next one in. Let that spread out. Now the debate I'm having with myself is what to do with the centerpiece. I was thinking of pouring some of the polished copper down there and then clear resin on top of it so we can see down into the table. Um, I'm having a little think about that. And uh, what I come up with, I'll let you know. Okay guys, that is the final pour in these sections now done. So now I just gotta pay attention to this for the rest of the day, let it set up, make sure nothing falls into it. Just keep an eye out for air bubbles, flash them off if any arise and just keep putting this swirl pattern into it. So I need to let it just set up now and I come back and make sure that I get this pattern into it just before it goes off so that we're left with a nice design. In the center then I've just decided to um, pour in some more of this pigment with the powder and the polished copper and then I'm gonna put a clear resin down on top of this. So I want a kind of a 3D effect so I wanna be able to see down into the table so again, I'm going to have to make sure that I get this pattern exact in the center. And uh, you'll be able to see that then down through the clear resin. So I have another pour to do later on today or maybe tonight when this has gone off and gone hard. I'm going to pour clear resin and fill this center piece up with clear resin. So yeah, that's it. So just for the next few hours now, I've got to pay attention to this thing. Like I say, remove any air bubbles and uh, keep the pattern in it. So I'll do that. And later on, maybe tonight, I'll get back with you. Just set up a fan there now, just to blow some cool air over. Like I say, it's getting quite warm and it's getting very hot in this uh, workshop today. My workshop's not insulated and when the sun comes out on a hot day like this, it gets very, very warm in here. So I don't want the resin getting too warm. So just have some cold air blowing over it and out the door. Um, if you're in a very dusty shop, just make sure you vacuum everywhere first. You don't want to start tur churning up dust and having that sit on top of your resin. That would not be good. So yeah, just let this for a few hours now and just let it do its thing and uh, we should be good to go. Okay guys, we are nearly there. We're nearly at the end of this pour now. I just have to pour in the clear resin into the void in the middle of the table. So it's all mixed up here. It's ready to go. So just in case I get this in, let it settle. And that is just about it for the resin pour. So let's crack on and do this. Here we go, that's gonna look fairly cool. I don't know if it's coming out on camera, but I'll try and capture it for you in a second, guys. But that looks awesome from where I'm standing. Fit in all the cracks as well. While I have it mixed up. Right guys, I'm just going to go handheld, I just want to capture how this looks, just to give you an idea. Now it's hard with the shine and stuff, but it looks fantastic in person. You can see right down into the table and all that copper at the bottom. 
So with the shine, it's a bit of a nightmare. I can't get the camera down. You can see the way you can see down into it. So that looks fantastic now all the way along with the copper down underneath. And you can see right down into that table there now. There you go. Right guys, there we go. That is the resin pour complete. We achieved the effect we set out to. So we have that lovely copper effect and we have that um, transparent effect in the middle where you can look down into the table and it looks absolutely smashing. So we'll just leave that go off now, set up overnight. I keep checking on over the next few hours and so, but we should be good to go now. So there you go. Hopefully I capture that on camera. Again, the resin really takes all your attention. So it's hard when you're on your own to catch everything on camera, but hopefully you guys could see what you needed to see. And if you're going to attempt something similar, hopefully this video will help you out. Now, a couple of recommendations. Make sure that you have plenty of latex gloves. You will need a lot of these because you'll be constantly taking them on and off. Have a place set up where you can do all your mixing. So I'm mixing on top of a polypropylene sheet. It does spill. You do get splashes and drops places. And resin is a nightmare to get off wood. So on top of the polypropylene, it's easy clean up and scrape up. So, so set yourself aside a little place to do all your mixing. That's my advice. Um, Time-wise, again, do this over a weekend or if you have time during the week, set yourself a couple of days, a block of one or two days to do this. I started this yesterday morning. So it's going to be two full days I've worked on this now in order to achieve this effect. Another thing, plenty of hot glue to seal up that mold. And if your mold starts to leak, painter's caulk is absolutely fantastic. It will plug the leak for you. Again, the hot glue will not stick to the resin. Silicone will not stick to the resin when it's leaking out. So you can't plug your leak. Pour in a small bit, let it set up. That'll plug um, and seal up your mold for you. So that's my advice on that. And then just do it in stages. It's not actually that hard. I left it go a little bit hard before I mix it that last time. I was right on the edge of what I would recommend. So just make sure you get that swirl pattern in and then just kind of accept what happens after that because there's not much more you can do with it after that. And that's kind of it guys. Um, hopefully that's been informative. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've liked it. I've tried to cover everything. Again, the glass cast products are absolutely fantastic. Thanks again to MID Glass Fiber Supplies. They set me up with all this stuff you've seen me use in this video. So I will link to those guys below if you want to go check them out. If you're in Ireland, you want to do a resin table pour or you want to do resin for wood turning or boat building or anything, they go, those guys have all this kit available and they gave me all this in order to make this video. So that's absolutely fantastic and it's allowed me to do it so thanks again to those guys so that's kind of it in the next video it's going to be breaking that slab out of its mold and we're going to finish it so we'll have to flatten it again with the router sled and we have to sand it through various scripts get a finish on it polish it up and get it look fantastic and then after that we're going to build a nice oak frame for it to sit on so that's it guys i'm going to get out of here now i'm rambling on i'm sweating it's been a lot of, uh, a hard day two days work and uh, i can't even speak right now so if this has been useful don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you're new here think about subscribing comments and questions below anything you want to ask me feel free if you feel I haven't covered something or if something is not clear, be sure and leave it in the comments below. I will get back to you and help you out, guys, as best I can. So that's it. The resin pour is complete. Happy days.